Hi everyone, Alex at Quorumdale Farm. This evening I was doing my general evening walk around, check on the plants, see how things are going, and I noticed some bug damage and maybe some fungal or bacterial issues that I'm gonna need to treat for. And so I thought I should show you what I use to try to make this an organic raised garden as much as I'm able within reason to keep it organic. And on this table is I pretty much have my arsenal of not pollinator destroying insecticide, fungicide, fungal, fungicide, fungicide is the word. So I'll go over really quickly what each of these are and then I'll take you around with me as I use most of them to treat issues I'm seeing. Now you're not going to have a perfect garden. You're not gonna have perfect unblemished leaves. There is going to be damage and you need to determine for yourself in your garden what is an acceptable amount of issue. And like my sunflowers, which I'll show you, they have some nibbles in them. I think a little worm got up there and nibbled some holes. I'm not gonna spray that. It's it's not suffering, the plant is fine, the sunflower is gonna grow, and it's just not worth it to me to douse it in one of these, even though these are okay. I'm just not gonna do it. But I'm gonna show you some other plants, like my, some of my dahlias and my cucumbers, that I do think I need to intervene. So again, these are choices you need to make for your space. But I have here Sluggo Plus. Sluggo Plus is a great organic and kid and pet safe option for the reason I use it the most is earwigs. Earwigs are these nasty, chompy bugs that just love dahlias. They love to get up in the dahlia, eat the leaves, but the worst part is they love the blooms and the, the flower will start to open and those nasty little guys will get in and make holes and it'll just tarnish the, the bloom for you. So I like to use Sluggo Plus. It also does pill bugs, slugs and snails. I don't live in a place really with slugs and snails, but if you're a super wet, like England, for example, they've got major slug issues. So if you were to buy like one just one on this table for bugs. I think this one, Captain Jack's Dead Bug by Bonide is a really good one because it just treats a huge range of bugs, like bagworms, borers, beetles, caterpillars, moth, gypsy mop, loppers, leaf miners, spider mites, tent caterpillars, thrips, and more. So this is your widest range defense. It should be said that there's no such thing as an organic pesticide. There is pesticides approved for organic gardening. And there is a difference there. So this is still a chemical, but it is approved for organic gardening. If you wanna say you still have an organic garden, you can use this. I've got neem oil. So neem oil is pretty much like, you have a problem, spray neem oil on it. Well, it's not that magical, but it does help. You just need to spray it at the right time or you are gonna have pollinator issues. So if you go out in the heat of the day when the bees and the butterflies are active and you douse your plant in neem oil, it is not going to be good for them. But if you get up early in the morning or late evening, like it is now for me, it's almost eight o'clock. If I spray this, the pollinators are mostly all gone. They've gone home or they've gone to bed and it's going to be okay. So you have to be smart too about it. Neem oil. That's good. It's a good fungicide. It is a good thing. It's, it's pretty broad ranging, but it's not this like perfect thing that people sometimes act like. Okay, I don't know how to say this and I'm gonna say it wrong. Diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth. You might see it in gardening groups. People just use the acronym DE. This is great for all the crawlies in the soil. So slugs, beetles, millipedes, centipedes, fleas, carpet beetles, bed bugs, even grasshoppers. I sprinkle this. It almost looks like baby powder. You sprinkle around. All right, we're almost done. Mite X. This is another Bonide brand. It obviously goes after mites, but also thrips and aphids, which are huge issues, especially for dahlias. So I have that in my arsenal. And last but not least, I don't have the main bottle, but this bright blue indicates this is copper fungicide. And I'm gonna use this on my cucumbers. And it is really great for when you have like mildew and fungal issues, which in Oklahoma, when it's so humid and it's apparently raining all the time, I'm gonna have issues. So this is my army. This is primarily what I use. And let me take you around the garden and show you examples of when I would use some of these. All right, so we're in my cucumber bed. I have only cucumbers in here. It's a bush style cucumber. And I noticed this nastiness. 
A leaf should look more like this one next to it, pretty green, but this has got these speckled spots all over it and some of them are starting to burn and die. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't, wasn't quite sure what it was. I thought it was bug damage at first, but I researched it. I sent some pictures to friends and my analysis with some help is that it's downy mildew. So this is not actually a bug doing this damage. This is bug damage. These are leaf miners here, leaving these little tracks. But I think with all the rain and then rising heat and humidity that we had right after all the rain, I ended up with some downy mildew problems. So copper fungicide, I need to catch it early or I'm just gonna have a major issue and I might even have to rip them out. So I need to get spraying. Here we go. All right, so I have dahlias in all four corners of the beds. I like to just put this down regularly, especially if I have a lot of rain and I think some of it washed away. Super easy to apply. Sprinkle it around. The bugs eat it and die. Easy peasy. Sometimes I don't know exactly what is causing damage. I just know it's a bug of some sort and I want it gone. So I'll do a wide range of options. And I have something that's really tiny, like a larva almost, nibbling on my dahlia leaves. So I'm gonna use some of this DE and sprinkle it around the plant. And if those larvae ingest it, they're gonzo. This is my calendula area and see this black stuff? If I were to touch it, it's kind of hard and disgusting. It's not actually a bug. It is caterpillar poop. How gross is that? Ah! Do you see it? Oh my gosh, it actually just fell down. Look at that. See him? See that green thing? So close. Oh my gosh. Well, it's nice to know it's correct, but I didn't need him to fall on me. So, I'm gonna use That's Captain Jack's dead bug caterpillars. Adios, muchacho. You don't need to show me like actually murdering him, do you? I want to see you murder him. It feels a little aggressive. Let's not do that. Kill him. No. You're on camera. Oh my gosh. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> huh. He will ingest it and die. So I planted 60 dahlias. Some of them I bought, some of them I got for free and just gifted from friends. And there's a lot of disease that can be associated with dahlias. You can have leafy gall, you can have crown gall, but one that is really ripping through the dahlia community is the tomato spotted wilt virus, TSWV. And like the name says, it uh, affects tomatoes, but it's jumped to dahlias. And it is my understanding that it is a, it's a disease, but it can be spread by bugs. So if a thrip, bites a tomato with it and jumps over to a dahlia and nibbles on that dahlia, it can infect that dahlia. Once the plant is infected, it's done. There is not any known treatment for it and the entire leaf to tuber is infected and even the soil around it is very questionable. So there is no treatment for this. You need to dig it up, bag it, trash it, burn it, get it out of your garden. And I'm also not gonna plant a dahlia back in this spot this season because I'm not even sure how much of the soil around it might be an issue. I can put it probably a different flower in here, but not a dahlia. And let me show you the signs. The telltale sign for me is one, we have leaf, I don't really want, I don't wanna touch it. We have leaf discoloration where you can see all these dots, these green dots. This is not bug damage. Sometimes bugs can eat the leaves and it causes like a scab to form. That's not this. This is actually in the leaf discoloration, which tells me that it's an infection, not a bug bite, like a nibble, like a worm or an earwig. But this concentric circle here is really the biggest sign. If you can zoom in here, it's a circle with, oh, it's almost like a bullseye like circle. And I think these others are headed towards that, that uh, circular sign. They're just not quite as mature in their 
viral progression, if you will. So what I need to do is I need to dig up around this tuber. I'm gonna have my husband help me put it in a bag and it has got to go. And then I'm going to sterilize my shovel because I am not spreading this to my other dahlias. No way. Yeah, Just hold the bag. So I'm gonna do my very best to get it in. It's not a very big dahlia right now, but I wanna get a lot of dirt with it. You ready? $10 in dirt. <laughs> right. And it's infected the dirt. Yep. It's pernicious gross. This goes in the trash and we pray it doesn't spread. I have found that these products are the best arsenal you can have for organic gardening or attempted organic gardening that is pollinator bee friendly. Will it control everything? No. Will you still have damage? Yes. But should you be able to have beautiful flowers and a nice crop of vegetables? I think so. With early identification and early treatment, you should be able to stay on top of any issues you come across with these products. But I get it. Sometimes you have to bring in the big guns. I'm just hoping that when the plants are small and I stay on top of problems, I don't have to consider that. So I'll link everything in the description box below of what I use, and I'll keep you updated throughout the season. If I'm really not able to control some of these issues, I'll let you know, but I'm optimistic. See you in the next video. Oh, okay. Well, it's like the apocalypse of vehicle noise right now. You need to bring in bigger guns if you're really gonna lose a whole crop and whatnot. But I've been able with early identification and early treatment to keep things largely at bay with these guys. I will link them all in the description below. It's just, I can't talk over this, it's so crazy.